going to take this piece of cedar. This is um, 140 millimetres wide by about 18 millimetres thick, but really any piece of wood will do. 250 millimetres, making a mark. That's where the apex is. Uh, I'm going to set the saw at 45 degrees now. Take off one side. You can do it by hand, of course, but uh, you've got to be quite accurate to get a good fit. Just check here by making a mark in line with the, the lower end of the cut and going from there rather than aiming for the apex. The next thing is to cut the sides roughly first, slightly oversize. And that's it. And I'm going to mark where I've got to cut the, the mitre top. So that's that one there. I'm just using my fingers to check that they're nicely in line and then I'm going to make a mark just there. Now that is the left side so I'm going to mark both sides left and right and put that on the outside there. So this is the other side now, another mark from there. It should be 45 degrees so that's the right side and that's the right side so I know I can't go wrong now. I'll set the saw at 45 again. <laughs> Make a base now. Put that up there. Again, just with my finger, I'm just making sure that everything's lining up there. And I'm going to make a little mark underneath. ready to start assembling. So these are sheridized pins which uh, don't rust. This is a, an exterior glue. So that will go there. What you have to be sure of is that the slope goes the right way because um, it's easy to pin them on the wrong side. The other side now. Bit of glue. That's it. So these are my marks for left and right here. So that means um, that's the back. They all match up left, right. And that should now fit pretty well exactly. Now I'm going to put glue around the edges there. I'm making sure the two mitres match exactly. Now it does slide a bit with the glue, so you've got to be careful. And this one here. That'll anchor it all, and then I just turn it round. I'm just going to finish nailing here. I would normally, um, with a centre punch, just knock them all in. Just to, uh, make, makes it look a bit neater. So there's the, uh, the basic box there. So I'm going to pop that in there. And I'm just going to mark a fairly arbitrary point there. So that's the, the, the length of the roof. I'm going to make two of those. And the next third box. So I'm just going to offer these up now and just make a little mark there and there where I want the nails to go. Don't go all the way through. Try and get them lined up there. You can hold it just like that, they won't fall apart. Put some glue here. Put it on carefully, making sure it's flush with the back. And you can sand any unevenness off, but uh, the closer you can get, the better. On the other side. I've got plenty of glue here because then it makes the, uh, the apex fairly waterproof. Should, uh, I'm sure it'll be appreciated by the birds. 
just put a nail in there. So I'll just do one from the other side. Back here. So I'm going to put that little triangular piece in there that holds the, the lid in place. I've got some little fittings that go into the, uh, the side here to hold the lid in place. So I'm going to mark carefully by placing the lid on like so, dead centre, and then marking the centre point of the side. And then I'm going to put the square there, mark there, and mark there. Three centimeters and three centimeters. Take first a seven millimeter drill bit, pretty well vertical here. Drill down. You can see there the holes are pretty well in the center of the uh, the sides there. This is an eight millimeter bit. And I'm going to make that hole a bit wider. So little metal inserts. Make it much easier. So it's save using screws. You can use a, a bolt, an enge engineering bolt. I think I'll drill the hole for the um, the entrance hole now. So there we have the front. It needs to be somewhere there. And then using this thing called a Forzner bit, you can use an auger bit. A cedar is quite a soft wood and I think it's uh, better to put a plate on there to stop uh, squirrels and uh, woodpeckers and things getting inside there. Hole size is fairly important. The, the, uh, the birds are quite fussy about uh, the entrance hole. The smaller tits like uh, 25 millimeter, the larger tits 28 millimeter, sparrows 32 and um, if you look on the RSPB website they will tell you exactly what size entrance holes for different birds. I make little sparrow terraces where there are three entrance, three separate nest box in one because they're quite communal birds and they uh, like to nest together. Robins uh, like an open front and so do wrens and they are very territorial so you can't put any other nest boxes or feeding stations anywhere near because they won't use them. Blue tits are, um, are the most popular and most common uh, birds that uh, will use a, a nest box and I've known them uh, um, you know, find the box within minutes of it being put up and uh, they're ready to uh, take occupation. Sand it down all around and um, Bob's your uncle. Uh, to fix it to the wall it's best to take the lid off, put a couple of screws there and it can go onto the, the, the wall or the fence and uh, your, your uh, bird box is finished. Again, similar principle, but made with uh, flooring material, just uh, um, some leftover flooring. It is plywood. You need to uh, paint the edges with a bit of um, a varnish to protect them, otherwise they'll delaminate. These are very simple boxes here, made with recycled uh, material. Um, that one's for blue tits, small 25 millimeter hole. This one is for robins or wrens. Uh, these are good for solitary bees. Uh, they, um, are, they're not um, hive bees, they live by themselves. They lay eggs, uh, a series of eggs in each of these tubes. They seal up the end. Uh, the uh, um, eggs overwinter and pupate and then the following spring they emerge as fully grown bees. About a, a, a hundred times more efficient at pollinating than a honey bee, so they're things to be encouraged in your garden. Um, that will encourage uh, ladybirds and various other insects and those are for lacewings. Also they're big aphid eaters, so are, are ladybirds, so again to be encouraged in your garden. So that's a nice little thing, a nice little sculptural box, but also serves a, a, a good um, useful purpose. Um, at random, that is a, an apple or fat ball feeder. Uh, just put uh, the, the spike through the apple or, or fat ball and ready to go. But this is one of my minimalist uh, cube boxes, which I quite like. Um, very simple to use. You just hang them up and very easy to, to uh, clean out. All nest boxes should be cleaned out in the winter when, there's, uh, when they're not occupied. Uh, because the, the nesting does go a bit stale and a bit damp. Take it all out and the bird will replenish the, uh, the nest material in the spring with new stuff. 
That one is actually made from some flooring, would you believe bamboo, compressed bamboo, very heavy. Inside there, there is a little camera. Take off the lens cap. You can adjust the focus there just by twiddling the end of the lens there. And then you have to run that to the back of your television. Uh, this is a bat box. There are saw kerf marks all the way up there. So this goes vertically on a tree or a wall. The bats land there and then crawl up and they're cosy up inside there. You could probably get 20 or 30 bats in a, a box like that because there's two compartments, one, two. Both birds and mammals are always looking for somewhere to, uh, to, to find, to, to, to nest. And uh, uh, if, if this is within their range, that they'll, sometime they will find it and they do work.